In light of the recent state of affairs and the chip war between China and the United States of America, the former has been proven to be an unstoppable force. Due to the regulations against them, China has had to be self-reliant to bypass the lack of available ASML lithography machines needed to make cutting-edge silicon-based chips by making their own alternative, photonic chips. In today's video, we'll go over all you need to know about photonic chip development and, of course, what the future holds for China. In the world of semiconductors, over the past few months, the headlines have all been centered around one thing, USA versus China. The American government passed various measures and regulations stopping the exportation of Dutch-based ASML UV lithography machines and other advanced chip technologies to China. It didn't even stop there. The American government also barred companies from shipping chips to tech companies like Huawei. Guys, you see, it hasn't been great at all. China had been rapidly approaching the levels of American tech companies, which is an amazing achievement given how China came pretty much late into the chip game compared to America, but now, their plans have been derailed. Also, the US government banned recipients of government funding under the Chips and Science Act from expanding chip production in China for at least 10 years. As of now, even NVIDIA has been barred from delivering chips to China for the advancement of the ever-expanding field of artificial intelligence. However, there is a major misconception. A lot of people seem to think the chip war between the two nations is a recent development, that began under the administration of the former President of the United States of America, Donald Trump. But, on the contrary, it started years before that when Xi Jinping, the Chinese President, delivered a stunning speech in 2015, where he proudly declared China was at the forefront of breaking history. Do you also remember what Xi Jinping said about China a while back? About how the East is rising while the West is declining? Statements like these have the American government worried because they know the truth. They know China has been steadily gaining ground on them, at a rapid pace. From the standpoint of the American government, China poses a threat to national security, or at least, so they claim. You see, the reason why they believe the Eastern giant poses a threat to their national security is as thus, if China uses cutting-edge chips as a pillar of their military and defense industry, they may be too dangerous. With that in mind, that's why export regulations were put in place. To prevent entities like China from gaining access to these advanced technologies. But, let's be honest? Have they really succeeded in their quest to stop China from gaining access to advanced tech? Well, it's a bit of a gray area. In theory, the American government could efficiently serve as gatekeepers in the chain of chip supplies due to the monopoly of extreme ultraviolet lithography machines, or as they are more commonly called, UVs, from the Dutch-based company, ASML, to prevent China from making cutting-edge chips. But, on the other hand, that's just a temporary solution. UVs are critical in making advanced silicon-based chips, but there are a couple of other alternatives out there. There are a couple of novel packaging techniques that have the capacity of delivering similar proportions of transistors as one manufactured through UVs, but, the drawback though is that it's usually much more expensive. Technologies like deep ultraviolet lithography, commonly called DUVs can be used as an alternative to UVs, although, just as we said earlier, it's at a higher cost, but do you know something really interesting? The American government is also trying to stop ASML from selling DUV lithography machines to China. While the rumors are yet to be confirmed, China's dependency on the West was hardly ever obvious. You see, the most sophisticated foundries in the world today are Samsung and TSMC based in South Korea and Taiwan respectively. But, if you critically look into the blueprints, you'd realize most of the semiconductor equipment used is made by European and American companies. As a matter of fact, even the software used for electronic design automation in the production of semiconductors are virtually all American. In the past, Huawei bridged the gap between China and its Western rivals, but what about chip manufacturing? It's an entirely new and far more difficult game. In particular, the sad thing about the added costs of using alternative technology is that they're really crippling for Chinese companies. The American sanctions almost sent the likes of ZTE to bankruptcy and Huawei on a path of destruction, almost. However, thanks to China's perseverance, there seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel, and of course, we're talking about the prospect of photonic chips. Guys, what the United States of America failed to understand was that stifling China's access to Western technology would rekindle a raging fire for China to become self-sufficient. In China, the plan is simple. 
get better by producing our own cutting-edge chip technology or burn. Ever since the ban got implemented, the Chinese government has pumped crazy amounts of money into the home-based semiconductor industry to not only gain their technological independence from the Western world but also, to be on par with them. Huawei in particular has been one of the most sensationally innovative companies for photonic chips. Ever since the chip ban, they've tirelessly strived to search for other options in other fields, leading them to photonic chips, that don't even need advanced lithography machines made by the Western world. Amazingly, China has also produced the world's first-ever orbital angular momentum waveguide photonic chip and applied for a patent. For those who don't know why photonic chips are worth the hype, here is something you need to know. Photonic chips are 10 times better in computing while consuming only a fraction of the power any electronic chip you can find across the world needs. In addition, photonic chips are also estimated to be better and faster in transmission rate compared to electronic chips, so if everything goes according to plan, there's really no reason why photonic chips won't dominate electronic chips in the future. Another thing we'd like to add is that, at the moment, photonic chips could solve the issues of Moore's law in the future. You see, electronic chips are in the 7 nanometers slash 5 nanometers process, and with that in mind, it's going to be more and more challenging to rely on the current advanced technology we have to take the performance of chips to a higher level. The fact is that once those limits are reached, traditional silicon-based processors will fall behind the times. To further buttress this, the research on integrated circuits has slowly reached its endpoint, and when chips reach the field of 2 nanometers, it will be impossible to make a chip smaller than that, and even if it does happen by an amazing turn of events, there is little reason to believe it will be a dramatic improvement. One of China's biggest wins in the photonic chips field is that the technology is at its infant stage, and because of that, the Western world is yet to gain any monopoly in the field. If China could take the lead here, they would almost instantly overcome all of the disadvantages they are plagued with. Did you know the Dutch media are particularly wary about China's advances in the field of photonic chips? They claim that the bans and export regulations of ASML of lithography machines to China would soon be rendered useless, given neither China nor the rest of the world would be so reliant on UV machines soon. With all that has been said, though, 2023 is going to be a really big year for China. The very first ever production line for multi-material and cross-size photonic chips is estimated to be completed in Beijing in 2023. According to Xiang Legong, an independent technology analyst, photonic chips will be the next major direction of chip development due to their stability and low power consumption. Such chips aren't yet being produced on a large scale anywhere in the world, so the new facility will show that China is leading in this technology in the world. Over the years, China has seen the domestic photonic chip market dramatically expand. From 2015 to 2021, there has been a growth from $800 million to $2.08 billion, with an average annual compound growth rate of more than 15%, according to Insight and Info. Interestingly, in 2025, it is expected that the industry in charge of producing photonic chips will have an annual growth of up to 49%. However, one thing that must be stated is that photonic chips are still far from being mainstream at the moment. As things stand, China would have to divide its market into two parts, silicon-based chips on one hand and photonic chips on the other. Once photonic chips are set to take center stage with the world readily accepting and switching to the juicy prospects, it marks the game over for the monopoly of ASML in America. What are your thoughts about the current state of the chip war and China's resilience? Also, is the American government playing a losing game? Let us know in the comments.